Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Five Easy Questions, where we break down the stock market for new investors. Today, I am talking to the CEO of B Vectoring Technology, Ashish Malik. Uh, B Vectoring Technology is, correct me if I'm wrong, an agriculture technology company pioneering a natural precision agriculture system utilizing commercially reared bees to replace chemical pesticides and wasteful spray product applications. That's I... correct. Very nice to be on with you, Maddie. Thank you so much for joining me. I've already lied. It's going to be six easy questions <laughs> as I just want to um, check for anyone who doesn't know what are commercially reared bees. Yeah. Okay. That's a good question. So commercially reared beer, bees are, are beehives that a farmer would rent from a beekeeper to help them manage and pollinate their crops. So we're not, we don't work with uh, the wild bees that you might find in your backyard that kind of visit your lavender or whatever you might have, but right. really those beehives that you might see if you drive up and down, I live in California, uh, up and down the Central Valley, for example, or in the Pacific Northwest or wherever you might live. Wonderful. That makes sense. Okay. Now I'll actually just five more. Um, what are the challenges facing farmers in the agriculture sector over the next three decades? Well, I mean, it's, it's actually something that started more than three decades ago as well, mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, we've got uh, only so much land that we want to farm on, right? And we don't want people, for example, if you hear about in, in, in Brazil, folks are, you know, chopping down the Amazon and converting that into farming land just so that we can continue to feed a growing population, right? So we don't want that trend to continue. We want them to figure out a way, them being the farmers, on how they can feed a growing population with reduced resources, with reduced uh, land, which with reduced use of water, obviously reductions in fossil fuels. That's kind of a big thing these days, right? So the general, at the highest level, you're talking about doing more, producing more food with less, with less resources, right? So how do you increase farm productivity? How do you double the yield for every acre? How do you reduce water and the environmental footprint? These are the general, some of the general themes that have been going on for the last decade and will continue that way for the next three decades. What is, this kind of ties into what you just answered, but what is bee vectoring and what are its advantages over traditional crop treatment processes. Yeah, so if, so if you will, just kind of imagine a technology that is proven to increase farm yields, right? So the farmer is at the center, they are our customer, they're the key to being able to produce the, the food that we need across this planet. Mm -hmm. So we've got a system that's been proven to increase yields, certainly in the crops that we've started with by 20 or 30%. Right. So more berries per acre. Think about that. Right. Now, imagine that same system that doesn't use any chemicals. Mm -hmm. So us as consumers, we're asking farmers to reduce the amount of pesticides that they use, the amount of um, uh, synthetic fertilizers that they use. Our system doesn't use any chemistry. Imagine that same system doesn't use any water. Right. So water today, agriculture, I should say, is the biggest user of natural water or fresh water uh, of any industry. I live in California and we're going into our fourth year of, out of five of drought where farmers are being asked to rationalize the water that they use. Our system mm -hmm. has no water. And then finally, greenhouse emissions, right? Uh, we want to reduce the, the use of fossil fuels. Our system doesn't use any heavy machinery or any fossil fuels. So those are, those are the benefits. Yields through no chemistry, no water use, and no fossil fuels. What are the crops that you guys have been servicing, the ones that you were just talking about? So we started primarily with berries initially, mm -hmm. right? So we've got uh, a nice business that's growing across the U.S. in blueberries. We started in Georgia, but now we have customers in Michigan, the Pacific Northwest, in uh, New Jersey, and we're just opening up the California market, from, and then strawberries as well. So raspberries, blackberries, blueberries and strawberries. We've started doing development work in, uh, in tree nuts. So these are almonds, big a user of uh, beehives. So there's a lot of beehives already being used in that crop. So it's a great opportunity for us. 
Uh, we announced just recently the first trial that we're doing in stone fruit. And these are fruits with pits inside. And this particular, oh. this particular project is in cherries, but it could be applied in other crops as well. And then we'll work in apples in the future, as well as in greenhouses on vegetable crops like tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers. That's amazing, especially with the almonds. I've been conflicted with my almond milk because I know it uses so much water and it's so bad for the environment. It is. And, and, and it's one of those crops where you do need bees to help pollinate. The farmers are renting something like two and a half million beehives every February and March to pollinate their orchards. Right. Well, we could work with that exact same beehive. And mm -hmm. in addition to getting the farmer a better pollinated crop, we can now give them crop protection, which allows them to reduce their chemical fungicides at their spring. Oh, that's amazing. Um, you have kind of touched on this. Is there anywhere else in the world that bee vectoring technology is currently being used or that you want it to be used? So no and yes to those two questions. Okay. <laughs> uh, and the reason why it's not being used yet mm -hmm. is because we have to go through regulatory approvals, right? So it's just like when you when a pharmaceutical company is bringing a new drug to market, they have to go through, you know, FDA approval right. and similar in other jurisdictions. We got our EPA approval in the U.S. We have submitted for approval in Switzerland. We have submitted for approval in Mexico. We will be submitting later this year in the European Union and Canada and in Peru. So once those approvals are in place, we will be commercial in those markets as well. Amazing. So this is a worldwide vision. It absolutely it is. Yes. Amazing. And my last easy question, what other natural agriculture technologies or treatments is BVT developing? If any. So, yeah, sure. So we've got, so we've got two aspects to our, to our technology. One is the product that has the effect on the plant itself, on the crop. Mm -hmm. We call that our biological control agent we are a natural fungicide. We help manage diseases that plants would face. The other aspect of our technology is the precision delivery where the bees come in, right? So we've got other products that we're looking at that could be used with our bees from third parties. So we can control multiple diseases as opposed to one group. Right. And then the second thing that we're doing is taking our biological control agent and developing it for non-bee applied areas. So crops where you wouldn't use a, use a bee, like grapes or lettuce, where there's no flowers involved. And the beauty about there is we still can replace chemical fungicides. So it's still a win-win for the environment. We got less chemistry. And of course, it's a bigger footprint of crops for us. That's wonderful. I just have a quick rapid fire round for you and then I can let you go. That is all. Are you ready? Uh, sure. <laughs> These are the serious questions. Okay. <laughs> tea or coffee? Oh, tea. <laughs> what is the first thing you do in the morning? Brush my teeth. What is your favorite sport to watch? Soccer by far. <laughs> what is your favorite sport to play? Soccer. Favorite book? Oh, I'm reading one that's really interesting right now called American Dirt about the plight mm -hmm. of Mexican immigrants that are trying to find a way to get into the United States. Fascinating reading. Wow, that was amazing. That's the fastest anyone's ever answered that question. It <laughs> always takes like a five minute pause. Uh, because um, of what I'm reading right, right now, if, if you ask me what my favorite book is, I'd have to spend more time. That takes more time. <laughs> uh, cat or dog? Oh, I have two dogs at home, so dogs. Value investor or day trader? Value. Suit and tie or casual? I'm sorry? Suit and tie or oh, casual? I've transitioned to being casual. I used to be suit and tie, whatever, 10 plus. <laughs> That's the common answer, post-pandemic answer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> casual. Yeah. Um, if you had $1,000 to invest, what company would it be if not your own? Oh, another ag tech company. Wonderful. And very, very last question. What was the last movie you watched? Oh, uh, I can't even remember. Last time my wife and I were at the theater. I'm blanking. That one's James Bond. May, it may not have been the last one, but 
one of the last. The one that comes to mind. The one That's that comes perfect. To mind. The last James Bond movie, yeah. Anyone who's watching and is interested in your company, where can I send them to learn more? So our website, uh, www.beevt.com. And then we're on LinkedIn, social, all the social sites as well. But start at our website. You'll see videos and images about our system and how it's being used. Beevt.com. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining me and taking the time. And I hope I get to talk to you again in the future. Okay, terrific. Thank you.